Hey everybody, welcome to the round 16 preview. Carlton Fremantle at what is now announced as being at the MCG. This has been an interesting one. Um, the game was originally scheduled to be at Optus Stadium on a Sunday evening or, you know, twilight game. It was then moved to Saturday night and then obviously things happened with COVID and lockdowns and, and whatnot. It was then moved to Victoria. We thought it was going to be at GMHBA Stadium. Then it was going to be in Tasmania. Then it was back to GMHBA. But now um, I'm filming this at 12.46 p.m. on Thursday. And we have just been told that it's going to be at 7.40 p.m. on Saturday night at the MCG. And that's a win for us. I mean, it, it, look, it is what it is. It's, it, it's the game of football is going to go ahead. Um, it was. It's coming after a unconvincing win last week, but nonetheless a win and a win that was needed. And I'm what I'm hopeful for this week is that last week's win, yes, it wasn't you know impressive. It was really just a, a small patch in that second quarter that really um, set the tone. What I'm hoping for is just that feeling of win, the, the circuit breaker in the negative energy that had been around the club has now you know, culminated into potentially a second win in a row and a third win and a fourth win. And, and this is great because we're now entering this part of the season where we're going to be playing against teams who have finals aspirations and Freo are one of them. They're currently right, right there. Um, they're two games ahead, ahead of us in terms of points, which for me is really disappointing. I just think we're a better team than Freo. We did beat them very convincingly last time, you know, early in this season. Uh, yes, Fife was out and apparently that's a 40 point difference, but, um, I still think we should be winning this game. I don't know. Call me crazy. Call me that. I, tell me that I'm drinking the Kool-Aid. I, I still think we should be winning this game. I still think we're better placed than them. Um, you know, we have had success over them, whether it be in Victoria or or in Perth, and it's it's an important opportunity. I'm going to be repeating this. You know, till I'm blue in the face. You know, if you're not winning the premiership this year, you're playing towards your next premiership, and I hope that that's that mentality that our boys bring. Um, I'll be there. Um, I wasn't, to be honest with you, I wasn't going to go even if it was in Geelong. Um, just wanted to get home in time for fan cams and, and whatnot. And I don't know. I'm still, I've still got that disenchantment within me. Um, but last week definitely helped. You, you've got to be positive after wins. Not you don't. You don't have to get sucked in to thinking that it's anything other than just a, a win. But I think if we can, you know, get two in a row and then go to Geelong and then see what happens against Geelong, then we can go from there. Um, if you look at if you look at what's happening on the Fremantle front, um, Fife's going to play this time. It's said on their website here that he's going to split his time 80-20 between midfield forward, um, despite the lack of, of firepower and attack with Matt Tabernard, who's going to miss. And that's big for us because he's a very good player for them. Um, on our side of the equation, very interesting. Look, we know that Zach Williams is suspended, so he's going to miss, which is disappointing. Um, he didn't play very well the last time we played against Fremantle, so it's not like we're... You know, someone we're missing someone that dominated last time and and, and whatnot. Um, Sam Doherty is the other fascinating one. <laughs> Injury report comes out on Tuesday. I think it was no mention of Sam Doherty's ankle being sore or anything. And then this morning on Thursday, we get the news that he's had acute syndesmosis in his ankle and will require surgery. And I would assume that that's going to mean his season is done. Uh, I don't know if we'd risk him for one or two games at the end of the season. And that's. That's big. And does that explain his form? Has he been carrying this injury? I don't know. Did it happen at training? I mean, I think if he's been carrying the injury for a few weeks, I would have liked to have known about that as a supporter and a member. Um, if it happened during the game against Adelaide, I would love to have known about that in the injury report on Tuesday. Hopefully after this video, there's a little bit more clarity around it, but it really just smells of another example of just random miscommunication or, or not wanting to be upfront and proactive to the members um, pursuant to the Carlton Way document that was released in, I think it was 2019. So I continue to ask questions about that miscommunication. I'm hoping that that's going to be something that comes up in the external review and uh, we'll leave it at that. But long story short, Doc's not playing. And Zach Williams are not, is not playing. So what are the options? By the time you watch this video, the teams will be out. So I'm going to do my, I'm going to do my best to have a guess at what's going to happen. Murphy's going to be out as well, obviously. I think Newman will come in. I have a feeling Levi Kaspot will come in. Uh, I really do. And, and for me, I hope maybe Josh Honey gets a run as well. 
The other bit of injury news was that Eddie Betts pulled up pretty lame from that contest against Adelaide. So he might be in out as well. But look, we'll, we'll wait and see. I don't want to spend too much time talking about it because by the time you're watching this, the teams are already out. Um, uh, expectations, again, have to be there for me. Um, the, the ball movement against Fremantle last time was, was one thing that was really impressive for me. We, we, it was a case of we really got on top early and we dominated early. We didn't quite run away with it. I think we got up by as much as 50 plus, nearly 60. And then we let them back into the game somewhat. But ultimately, a 7-8 goal win. I mean, we're taking that every day of the week. And um, they've developed along the way since then, which is very you know, impressive for them. Um, you know, it's going to be difficult to beat a team twice in a year. They're going to want to, you know, they're going to have that motivation and they're really in the thick of the finals race. So, you know, I expect them to come out hungry and, you know, the MCG, I, I do think it is a big tick for us. It's a, you know, it's a little win for us. We did lose a game this year that was meant to be at the MCG against the West Coast Eagles, which then got moved to Sydney. So for us, we get one back. Um, the language that I'm seeing from them is, is, is very interesting. And, you know, Justin Longmuir says here, yeah, whichever team handles it the best is going to get the edge. And that's really what it's all about. So for us, very similar mentality to last year, anywhere, any place, you know, any time, anybody. And I think um, it's going to be a cracking contest. So I look forward to it. Those are just my thoughts about it. But what about you? How are you feeling this week? Uh, I'm hoping that you're feeling a little better after a win, even if you're not convinced that we're turning this ship around, but let me know what you think about the changes now that they're out. Uh, let me know about how you're feeling about the game. Are you going? Are you excited? Are you going to be watching it from home because you've had enough? Are you going because you're sticking fat? Um, all of it is relevant, and I look forward to having a chat about it in the comments. With that, go the Mighty Blues. Yeah.